In this video, I want to talk about a DEXA scan, which is, I think, technically a kind of medical image. Less common than those big three, um, x-ray, MRI, and CT. But the DEXA scan is used for something very specific, and you might be familiar with it if you are into um, personal training and, and uh, performance, because it is used to measure both bone density and uh, body fat. So DEXA stands for uh, dual energy, X-ray, uh, absorptimetry, it's a funny word, but essentially means like how much, how much energy from X-rays of two different energy levels gets absorbed. So the idea is you shoot a little tiny amount of X-rays through the body, and by adding up how much of it gets absorbed in different areas of the body, you can get an idea of uh, how much fat, how much muscle, and how much bone is in each of those areas. So this is, this is I should point out, this is a two-dimensional imaging uh, technology because it just, um, it's pushing these x-rays through your body and then adding them up. So all of the, unlike say an MRI or, or a CT scan where we can get these like cross-sectional slices, the uh, the DEXA scan just shoots x-rays through the whole body and it will add up how much of it gets absorbed and then figure out, based on information that we know about, how much does fat absorb x-rays, how much does muscle absorb x-rays, how much does bone absorb x-rays. You can get a summary of, say, in a particular area of the body, like, say, right here at the head of the femur, in this area, what's the density of the bone? What's the, the body fat content? What's the muscle content? Uh, DEXA is used generally for uh, two purposes. First purpose being bone density um, testing. Most relevant when working with older adults, especially older women, uh, this is used to assess risk for osteoporosis and, and fracture. So osteo, bone, porosis, like porosity, meaning your bone is full of holes and very porous and not very strong. Uh, you can assess this with a DEXA scan. Since this is probably something you will encounter if you go the clinical route, I do want to briefly introduce you to two, um, two metrics that come out of uh, DEXA. So DEXA is, is in this sense, it's quantitative. meaning we get a number, a quantity. It gives us an actual uh, number that we can use. Generally, you get one of, well, you generally get two numbers if you get a DEXA scan for bone density. And you'll get it, by the way, in specific regions. So you might get a um, lumbar spine bone density uh, number for your, for your bone, for how strong it is. You get two numbers, you get a T score, and a Z score. Now, if you have taken uh, finite math, you may remember, hopefully, um, the the normal distribution, or sometimes called the Gaussian distribution. So let's say we collected bone density data on like a thousand people and we just made a histogram of it. Um, bone density, and you'd measure that in like grams per per centimeter, square centimeter or, or whatever. Uh, the units of that don't really matter. It'd be some distribution like this, right? So a lot of people are out here in the middle and then out here. So way out here, this is people with super, super strong bones, maybe like uh, elite gymnasts and, and like, I don't know, skateboarders and volleyball players, people who do lots of really high impact activity. People down here, these are people with um, pretty severe uh, osteoporosis or osteopenia. So the, let's say we would do, let's say the distribution is um, people like you and me, healthy adults. I think, it's, I think it's healthy young adults, actually. So maybe you remember, maybe you don't, the from finite, if you've taken it, the idea of uh, standard deviations. So I'm not going to go over the math of it, but essentially it's a normalized unit for if you go out one standard deviation in either direction, um, 
you're within, I think, what's like 68% of people fall within that. And then if you're in two standard deviations out here, that's something like 95% of the population. Now, you might be wondering why I'm bothering to explain this math stuff. What a T-score is, it's how many standard deviations above or below the population average for healthy adults are you, is your bone density. So say you get a DEXA scan and you get a T-score of negative uh, 0.5. This means that you're 0 0.5 standard deviations below the population average. I mean, you'd, you'd be like kind of maybe out here. Maybe you're right here. So that's, you know, it's not great, but it's not so bad. Uh, generally, T-scores of negative 1 are classified as uh, bad, meaning you need to do something to increase your bone density, exercise, or um, bisphosphonate medication, or other uh, other strategies. So that's T-score. Z-score is exactly the same thing, except it's normalized to people your age. And I think it might be um, it might be sex normalized too, so it might be separate for men and women. Um, because as people get older, if you may, if you did the same experiment, get a thousand thousand healthy, oh I don't know, seventy year olds, and made a distribution of made a made a histogram of their bone density. It would probably be like this, right? Because on average, you do lose bone density throughout your life. Okay, so um, T score, Z score, these are things you will see if you or a patient that you're treating has gotten a uh, DEXA scan for bone density, and it is region specific, meaning you can get it for the lumbar spine, you can get it for um, the femoral neck and head, you can, if you want, you can get it other places too. Generally, these are the ones that people um, look at because that's where people tend to get um, fractures the most. Occasionally, you will also see it at the the, um, the radius and the ulna or sometimes the humerus because occasionally, well, more than occasionally, another common place that uh, elderly adults get fractures is in their arm because they fall down and they try and break their fall and then they break their arm. Okay, so that's the first use of, of DEXA. Um, you'd use it in a clinical setting to get bone density. So let's let's write that down. Um, DEXA, applications. Number one, bone density. Number two, this is where you would use it in a sports performance. You can get body composition. I know some of the uh, one of the other classes in uh, kinesiology does uh, skin calipers as a lab and does the the um, the water underwater weighing as a lab um, as ways to assess body fat percentage. But gold standard, like how you would do this if you're doing like a, a research study or what you might do on, a, on an elite athlete. Um, DEXA is a really good way to get body composition. It gives you percent body fat. It also gives you um, bone mass, which of course is the whole purpose of using it for bone density. Uh, you can get, so, so percent body fat, uh, percent lean body mass, which is everything except bone. Well, of course, primarily that's muscle, uh, or sorry, everything except fat. So that would be muscle and bone, and you can get um, you can get muscle mass directly. So when you read, uh, say, research studies on different uh, strength training protocols or uh, different supplements, um, different dieting strategies, you will quite often see these assessments from DEXA. They'll use DEXA to get percent body fat, lean body mass, and muscle mass. You can also get, um, you, by the way, because you can get percent body fat, of course, you can also just get body fat by multiplying by um, by multiplying by your total body weight. So quite often, an outcome that people care about in the context of, say, weight loss is um, how many pounds or kilograms of fat did you lose? Because you might be in a situation where you put a client on 
a program that includes um, a healthier diet, more cardiovascular ex uh, exercise, more of exercise and lifting. And uh, their body mass might not change very much, but you don't really care about body mass. You care about body composition. So DEXA is a good tool, not the only tool, but a good tool for doing that.